In this video, I do a first set of scientific tests on the Fitbit Charge 5. First, I test the quality of the sleep tracking against a scientific EEG monitor. Second, I'll check the heart rate accuracy. Third, I'll take a quick look at the GPS accuracy. And finally, I do a step counting test. As always, I do not want to waste your time. So timestamps are in the description below and also on the timeline. Hello everyone, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. In this video, I test the most important features of the Fibbit Charge 5 that are available upon release. Specifically for the sleep test, I'll compare the Fibbit Charge 5 against two EEG devices. For the heart rate tracking, I tested it during four spinning sessions, eight bike rides, a skateboarding ride, and three weightlifting workouts. I tested the GPS while cycling, and finally I tested the step counting by taking exactly 4,000 steps. The Fibbit Charge 5 has a number of additional features, like breathing rate, heart rate variability, skin temperature, and sleep oxygen saturation measurements. And I plan to test most of these features in a future video. Finally, the Fibbit Charge 5 also has an electrodermal activity sensor and an electrocardiogram or ECG sensor. Unfortunately, these are not yet enabled by Fibbit at the time I'm recording this video. However, my channel is not so much about listing features. Instead, on my channel, I try to test the accuracy of these different measurements. Over the last few weeks, the Fibbit Charge 5 has been the most highly requested tracker to test. In the video today, I'll do a set of scientific tests. And since I'm in a unique position to test the accuracy of the sleep tracking algorithm, I want to start off with the sleep test. For the sleep comparison, I wore the Fibbit Charge 5 to bed for 5 nights. And at the same time, I also wore either this portable scientific EEG device or this consumer EEG device. And I also recorded myself using an infrared camera. The EEG devices can actually measure your brain waves and muscle movements and are therefore ideal for measuring your sleep stages. Now normally I would just use this scientific EEG device called the ZMAX for which I can access the raw data and manually evaluate the individual nights. Now I have two reasons for also using this second EEG device called the Dream 2 headband. First of all, I've had the ZMAX for about three years now and the battery seems to be losing some of its capacity. So for a significant amount of the nights, the battery dies before I wake up. So to ensure I had enough data for this video, I also used the Dream 2 for some of the nights. The second reason for using the Dream 2 headband is because I want to expand the sleep testing by also having other people test smartwatches while they sleep. However, they need to wear an EEG device as a reference, something like the Dream 2 headband, which is easy to use. In a scientific paper, it was shown that the Dream 2 seemed to work really well. However, to get a feel for how well it works on myself, I want to start using it during some tests. Now, I manually went through the recording of the scientific EEG device and scored each part of the night for the different sleep stages. I also loaded the data from the Fitbit and Dream 2 EEG device into the coding language I use. Now, to the results I obtained. Let's first have a look at the accuracy over the two nights that I used the scientific EEG device. We will start by looking at the two individual nights, after which we will calculate some statistics. Here you see the first night I recorded. On top you see the sleep stages as they were recorded using the EEG device. Along the horizontal axis we have the time of night, and as you can see I went to bed around 1. On the vertical axis we have the different sleep stages, that being deep sleep, light sleep, REM sleep and awake. The sleep stages are plotted in the same order as they're usually displayed in research. On the bottom you can see a similar plot, but now for the sleep stages as they were recorded using the Fitbit Charge 5. If we first look at deep sleep according to the EEG, which I marked here in purple, we see a decent overlap between the Fitbit Charge 5 and the EEG device. The Fitbit Charge 5 detected both of the deep sleep segments I had, however it also detected some extra deep sleep later in the night that I did not really have, as you can see right here and right here. Next, looking at light sleep, marked here in cyan, we see that most light sleep detection was okay, since most of what was light sleep was also detected as being light sleep. If it was confused, it seems to be mostly confused with deep sleep. Now REM sleep detection was pretty good. In total I had 4 REM sleep segments and the Fitbit detected 3 out of 4 of these. It missed the first shorter REM segment and part of the last REM segment was confused with awake time. However all in all this is not bad. To see the sleep cycles I added non-REM sleep in blue and again marked REM sleep in red. Each sleep cycle starts with a combination of deep sleep and light sleep together called non-REM and always end in REM. I would say that based on just the data from the Fibbit Charge 5, I would be able to see most of the sleep cycles. I would only miss the first one. 
Now awake detection marked here in green was okay. The Fitbit Charge 5 detected both awakenings. However, it did detect a lot of extra awake time that was not really there. Now this is the second night I recorded. The problem with this night was that the EEG device stopped recording after about six hours since the battery ran out. So we're missing the end of the night as you can see right here. Looking at deep sleep, we again see that all of the deep sleep I had was detected. However, a lot of extra deep sleep was detected near the end of the night. Light sleep detection again is pretty good, though some light sleep was detected as being deep sleep. Now REM sleep detection was really good for this night, with almost all REM sleep correctly being detected as being REM sleep. This also means we can see all of the sleep cycles for this night, at least for the part of the night that was recorded. I did not have any awakenings during this part of the night and the Fibbit Charge 5 correctly detected this. So far, I'm pretty happy with the sleep tracking accuracy of the Fibbit Charge 5. It detects a bit too much deep sleep and for one night it detected more awake time. However, all in all, it seems to be performing really well, as I've come to expect from Fibbit devices. RAM sleep detection is pretty good, which is what most other devices struggle with. To get an even more objective view of the results, let's calculate some statistics regarding the consistency between the sleep stages of the Fitbit Charge 5 and the EEG device. However, first a quick side note. If you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, consider subscribing to my Instagram and my weekly newsletter. Of course, you would also make me really happy if you subscribe to this YouTube channel. Now enough self-promotion, let's see what the overview statistics say. First, let's look at the total percentage of each sleep stage the EEG device and the Fibbit Charge 5 predicted. Here I display those percentages for the EEG device on the left and the Fibbit Charge 5 on the right. As you can see, the Charge 5 predicts too much deep sleep, as we also saw in the individual nights, and also too much awake time. This also means it predicts too little light sleep, but the total amount of REM sleep is roughly correct. However, as we already saw based on the individual nights, the timing of these sleep stages is also vital. Therefore, more important than these total percentages is checking if the Fibbit Charge 5 predicts the correct sleep stages at the right time. That is what is displayed here. On top we have the sleep stages according to the EEG device, and on the left the sleep stages according to the Fibbit Charge 5. Now each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the actual sleep stages was recorded as each sleep stage by the Fibbit Charge 5. All the sleep stages that are correctly predicted will be along the diagonal of this matrix, which I will highlight in green as I'm explaining the results. First, looking at deep sleep, we see that almost all deep sleep I had was correctly predicted as being deep sleep. More than 90% was correctly predicted. If deep sleep was confused, it was mostly confused with light sleep. Light sleep was also predicted decently, with more than 60% of what was light sleep also correctly predicted as being light sleep. If it was confused, it was mostly confused with deep sleep and REM sleep. Now REM sleep tracking was also pretty good, with about two thirds of what was REM sleep also correctly predicted as being REM sleep. If it was confused, it was mostly confused with light sleep, but also sometimes with awake time. Awake time detection was also pretty good with almost all awake time correctly detected. So this is all looking pretty good as we've come to expect from Fitbit. However, do we get the same results when using the Dream 2 EEG headband as a reference device? I'll not go into the same details before, but I'll highlight the most important results. Our both the Dream 2 headband and the Fitbit Charge 5 for three consecutive nights. Here's a similar confusion matrix to before, but now with the Dream 2 headband as a reference. Again, we see that deep sleep detection is really good for the Fibbit Charge 5, with almost all deep sleep correctly predicted, with a 96% match. However, similar to what we saw before when we were using the other EEG device as a reference, the Fibbit Charge 5 detects some extra REM sleep later in the night that was not really there. As you can also see for this night right here, and also for this night right here. Light sleep detection shows an even better overlap with this EEG device compared to the ZMAX with an 80% agreement. If it was confused, it was mostly confused with deep sleep. The accuracy of REM sleep appears to be a bit worse if we base it on this EEG device at only 50%. However, if we actually look at the individual nights, for instance for this night right here, we can actually see there is a decent match between the REM sleep of the EEG device and the Charge 5. Three out of the four REM sleep segments were detected. And we see the same for most other nights, like this one right here, where all REM sleep was detected except for this last part right here. And also for this night right here, where it misses a shorter REM segment at the beginning of the night, but it picks up on the later ones. So all in all, it's not bad and matches what we saw for the other EEG reference device. If REM sleep was confused, it was mostly confused with light sleep. Awake detection was again pretty good with 90% of the awake moments correctly detected as being awake. We do see again that the Fitbit detects some extra awake moments like in this night right here. And we see something similar in this night right here. 
overall, I would draw the same conclusion from both of the tests I did. Namely, that the Fitbit Charge 5 is pretty good at sleep tracking. Most of the time, the sleep stages are detected correctly, though it does tend to sometimes detect some extra deep sleep and awake time. RAM sleep detection was pretty good, allowing us to see most of the sleep cycles based on just the data from the Fitbit. All in all, it seems to perform like I would expect from a Fitbit, which means it's among the best smartwatches when it comes to sleep tracking. To put this into perspective, let's compare it to some of the better smartwatches I've tested before. That is what is plotted right here. On the top left, we have the same plot as we saw before, showing the performance of the Fitbit Charge 5. On the top right, we have the results for the Whoop strap. On the bottom left, those for the Fitbit Inspire 2. And the bottom right, those of the Mi Watch, which I also recently reviewed. As you can see, the Fitbit Charge 5 on the top left performs about equally well as the Fitbit Inspire 2, which is on the bottom left. Only in deep sleep detection does it appear to be significantly better. However, I tested the Inspire 2 for many more nights, so it could be that the nights of the Charge 5 are not completely representative. On the top right, we have the Whoop strap, which is actually one of the best devices at detecting REM sleep, which is important for seeing your sleep cycles. The percentages for the Charge 5 are slightly better than those of the Whoop strap. However, the Whoop strap is definitely amongst the top three brands of sleep trackers I've tested so far. Fitbit tends to be ever so slightly better and the Withing Sleep Analyzer also performed really well. I should mention that I used dozens of nights to test the Whoop strap and only two nights for the Fitbit Charge 5, at least for the data displayed in this plot. So more testing of the Charge 5 is needed. For the next set of tests, let's take a look at the heart rate accuracy of the Fitbit Charge 5. To test the heart rate accuracy, I'll compare it to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which is generally considered one of the most accurate consumer devices available for heart rate measurements. I wore both the Charge 5 and the Polar H10 ECG chest strap for four spinning sessions, eight bike rides, one longboard ride, and three weightlifting sessions. That way, I can check my heart rate at different heart rate ranges and during different levels and types of movement. Let's start off with the accuracy during spinning. Here I displayed an overview of the heart rate accuracy during spinning. Each dot here is a single heart rate measurement with along the horizontal axis the value according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and along the vertical axis the value according to the Charge 5. The blue line indicates perfect agreement, so any measurement along this line had roughly the same value for the Polar H10 and the Charge 5. The red line indicates those measurements where the value according to the Charge 5 is half that of the actual value according to the Polar H10. The reason I added this line is because in the past I've seen that many devices measure half the actual heart rate when they make a mistake. The more measurements there are in a certain area, the darker black the color. As you can see, the Charge 5 performed pretty well during spinning, as most of the measurements are along the blue line. However, there are still quite a few points away from the blue line. So let's have a look at the individual training sessions to see when these problems occur. Here you can see the first spinning session. Along the horizontal axis we have the time and my heart rate is along the vertical axis. In blue I plotted my heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and in red is my heart rate according to the Charge 5. As you can see, I took four short breaks in the spinning session where my heart rate would dip. For this first spinning session, you can see that in general, the Charge 5 and the ECG chest strap agree pretty well. However, there are some moments throughout the session where the Charge 5 shows sudden spikes in my heart rate. For this second spinning session, the disagreement is much larger. There often appears to be a delay in the Charge 5 picking up an increase in my heart rate, and there are also spikes in my heart rate sometimes. Now, this third spinning session is again a lot better with very good agreement. However, this fourth and final spinning session again shows quite a few issues. Overall, the results during spinning are definitely not bad. However, there are better devices out there as well. Next, let's take a look at cycling outside, which I recorded while cycling to and from work. If I cycle outside, there are many more bumps and I also tend to sweat a bit more in the sun, which might also influence the accuracy of the Charge 5. Let's take a look. Here we see an overview of those measurements, similar to before. As expected, the deviation between the Charge 5 and the ECG chest strap is now a lot bigger. Both below and above the blue line do we see more deviations. Let's take a look at some of the individual bike rides to see why this is. Here we see the first bike ride. Again in blue is the Polar chest strap and the red line is the Fitbit Charge 5. As you can see, the overall pattern in heart rate mostly matches, however there are definitely some significant deviations. We see something similar for this second bike ride. The overall pattern sort of matches, but there are significant deviations. And we also see that for this third bike ride, which is arguably a bit better. Overall, we see the same pattern for all of the bike rides. The general slow patterns in my heart rate match. However, the individual peaks and dips in my heart rate are mostly missed by the Charge 5. 
Next, I want to briefly look at a longboard ride. This involves slightly less movement and bumpiness compared to cycling, so I expect this to be slightly better. That is indeed what we see. Most of the peaks and dips in my heart rate are matching between the Charge 5 and the ECG chest strap. So tracking my heart rate during longboarding appears to be a slightly easier task for the Charge 5 than bike rides. To close off this section, I want to look at weightlifting. Now, weightlifting is notoriously difficult for wrist-worn devices because during weightlifting, I flex the muscles and tendons near my wrist, and this makes it hard for the watch to accurately detect the sudden changes in my heart rate. Let's take a look. This is the overview of my heart rate accuracy, similar to before, but now for weightlifting. Of course, the average heart rate is much lower during weightlifting and during cardio workouts. As you can see, in the lower heart rate ranges, there's a pretty good agreement between the chest strap and the charge 5. However, in the higher heart rate ranges, there are many points below the blue line, indicating that the charge 5 detected a too low heart rate. Let's take a look why this is. Here we see an example weightlifting session. Again, in blue is my heart rate according to the chest strap, and in red is my heart rate according to the charge 5. And you can see there's a pretty big disagreement between both devices. The Fitbit Charge 5 is not able to pick up on the increases in heart rate that accompany each set that I did. We see the same in this training session right here, where it was able to follow the overall patterns, but not the peaks in my heart rate that go with each set of the exercises I did. And we see the same for this final session right here. The overall patterns mostly match, but the peaks are missed. Overall, the heart rate accuracy of the Fibbit Charge 5 seems to be okay. It mostly follows along with the chest strap during spinning and it was okay during longboarding. However, it really struggled while cycling and during weightlifting. While I was cycling outside, I also recorded my route using the Charge 5's built-in GPS. Now I'm working on a way of quantifying the GPS accuracy, however, this is still in the works. In this video, I just want to briefly show you how well the GPS signal was acquired and how well it followed along with the roads. Now these are the recordings for the 8 bike rides I did. I always initialize the cycling just before biking to or from work. This means that I did not give the Charge 5 extra time to acquire the signal. Now for 6 out of the 8 bike rides, it was able to acquire the signal quite quickly. However, for 2 out of the 8 bike rides, it missed any signal for most of the ride. Now when it does get a signal, it does appear to be pretty decent at staying true to the actual roads that I cycled on. It did not deviate much from the actual route I took. All in all, looking at this route in its entirety, this is not looking too bad. However, as I said, I'm working on ways of better quantifying this. I was thinking about using trajectory similarity calculations using dynamic time warping. However, if you have any thoughts on how to best test this, leave it in the comments below. The Charge 5 also features a step counter. To see if this counts my steps accurately, I went out and took exactly 4,000 steps in segments of 1,000 steps. To get an accurate step count, I manually counted my steps using this tally counter. Let's take a look at the results. As I mentioned, for the step counting test, I went out and took four times exactly 1,000 steps. I wore the Charge 5 on my left arm and I alternated holding the tally counter in my left and right hand, which is what these labels refer to here. Now these are the actual steps counted by the Charge 5 when I was wearing it on my left arm. And as you can see, they were pretty close to the actual 1000 steps I took for each of the four segments. However, the Fibbit Charge 5 did tend to overcount some steps, especially for the first thousand steps where for a while I was stuck behind a few people walking really slowly, maybe for a minute or two, it did really overcount my steps. Just to put that into perspective, here are the steps counted by two Mi Band 6s I wore at the same time. As you can see, both of these performed slightly better than the Charge 5, though they also tended to overcount my steps. Now I have to mention that Fitbits are notorious for overcounting steps, especially during activities that are not supposed to give you any steps. For instance, while riding in a car or riding on a bike. This is something I still want to test in the future. Overall, the Fibbit Charge 5 performed mostly as I expected, which means it performed similarly to other Fibbits I tested in the past. The sleep tracking of Fitbits, including this Charge 5, is the best out of the wearables I've tested. Only the Whoop Strap and the Withing Sleep Analyzer perform almost as well for sleep tracking. The heart rate tracking of the Charge 5 was decent. It did well enough during spinning and longboarding, however it struggled during cycling and weightlifting. The step counting was pretty good, though it did tend to overcount. The GPS also appears to do pretty well, however more testing is needed. So, should you buy the Charge 5? Well, in general, it's a pretty decent all-round tracker. Especially if your focus is on sleep tracking, I would really recommend it. 
If your main focus is on heart rate tracking, it's not terrible, but there are definitely better trackers out there. In that case, you might want to consider the Garmin Venue 2, the Whoop Strap, or if you're an iPhone user, I would definitely recommend the Apple Watch, since this is the best heart rate tracker by far. In general though, if you want to be sure of good heart rate tracking, the best thing to do is to buy an ECG chest strap. There are a number of limitations to the test I did here. The most important is that I just tested it for a limited number of days and just on me. I plan to do another review in a few weeks, hopefully with some software updates where I do more thorough testing and I also test some of the other features of the Charge 5. In my videos, I do scientific tests on different devices like the Aura Ring, the Fitbit and the ScanWatch. And in the end, I hope to use tracking to improve my life. So if you like that subject and like this video, consider subscribing to my channel and also consider giving it a thumbs up because it makes it easier for other people to find my videos. Thank you so much for watching. If you want more content like this, consider subscribing to my channel and also watch some of my other videos.